Okay, so an accumulation of things that I won from the last uh, auction at the HRD auction rooms. Uh, things from braiding. And uh, Vic's coming around in a moment to pick up uh, his share of the goods. So I'm just filming this one first. So this is an uh, old Chamber of Horrors sign. So you see in my hand, it's not particularly big. I don't remember this one. I'm guessing it's from uh, the time of... Uh, of Graham Osborne Smith and it was the original sign when you went in but it's pretty well made actually it's well painted and uh, that will that will soon be leaving my ownership this is the frame print of braiding I won for 34 pounds plus costs uh, it's quite yes yeah, about two two and a half feet by two feet it's fairly big um, it's in lovely condition, but this obviously because it was never in. I'm um, really where well, the public could get to it, but uh, framed in perspex. These are the forge tools. I don't even know how many they are, and I doubt if any of them are actually used in the Chamber of Horrors. They might have been lying around somewhere, but uh, I got them all for 22 quid. Oh, there's about ten different sets. They're generally all these pincer type things. I think Osborne Smith had actually bought them, but never did anything with them. They're very rusty. Um, they all appear to be, uh, every single one of them. Um, these plier clamp things, different sizes. But that's a heavy old weight. Here's the classic, folks. The Chamber of Horrors sign. You see with a couple of years being outside, bits of the uh, paint have flaked off. There's still genuine cobwebs and uh, crap on it. You can see now how the whole thing was burnt through initially with the planks. And obviously this has been the exposure to the weather over 25 years. has actually worn the burning away. These are the signs that uh, cost me a fair old bit, but worth it. So this is the one. 2,000 years of human history now confront you for within the shadows of these ancient walls. The famous and the infamous, both Christian and heathen alike, have stressed and fretted their hour upon the stage of life, and yet all have been greatly laid to, gently laid to rest. A few of you are prepared to use them now for buildings to speak of what a fascinating story can here be told. This used to be attached to the front of the uh, rectory mansion by the fountain. This one used to be attached to... Uh just before the lower courtyard in a little alcove where there was a big uh, sack wheel thing fixed to the wall. He who wisely gives away his treasures gives away his plagues, but he who retains their increase heaps upon his sorrows. There is more delight in being without what you have given away than there is in possessing that which you do not know how to use. And then here's the one that everyone remembers just before you went in to the rectory mansion. I think that's probably what I actually pushed the bidding up, to be honest. Right, three items from the pier. Uh, these are t tacky, cheap, very cheap, like pound shop frames. Again, with perspex on. But, uh, you know, they're still important, historically. Ten longest seaside piers in Britain. Uh, this is the one that interested me most of all from the pier. It's this one showing where the Isle of Wight piers were then and now. So it's still standing if it's lost. And then, bizarrely, there was just one piece from Shanklin Pier, which uh, had never been sold before. Um, wasn't bothered about this one. But uh, this this is in, in much more dodgy condition, actually. I think this is an old frame that actually recycled. But uh, there we are, Shanklin Pier there. And there was one other big thing from the pier. There we are. <laughs> Welcome to the pier. Sex. Chamber of the Pier Sex. Famous piece. There we are, the disclaimer as you went in to the Chamber of Horrors, and it's a big bugger. There's my foot. Do you respectfully draw the attention of all grown ups, child miners, teachers, and that ilk that we, the guardians of these rat infested uh, bloody dungeons, do specifically absolve ourselves, our servants, and assigns from any responsibility whatsoever should they permit? 
either wittingly or unwittingly, any child or person of unstable mind to enter this horrendous chamber of horrors. Herein is displayed in all its gory detail the despicable savagery of man's inhumanity to man throughout the ages. These spooky dungeons will uh, readily command themselves to students of historical truth. <clears throat> yeah, right. And you, just plain, ordinary, bloodthirsty members of the public who wish to satisfy their innate curiosity. In short, whilst we do not think these dungeons are suitable for impressionable young children, yet other little demons nurtured on video nasties will doubtless take it all in their stride. And the bottom of it, kindly note, blood donors will be voraciously received, and any sorely distressed parents or harassed teachers wishing to divest themselves of their own little horrors are cordially invited to dump them right here. Thank you. R.I.P. Rest in pieces. And look, we have we have a, an angel of death there. How lovely. Okay, the final auction items from the uh, the second auction that I now own. This is a little trunk, which uh, was apparently in the little Jane scene. I don't remember it being there, but I didn't pay much for it. About twenty five, thirty pounds, something like that. And uh, inside, this is this is the mystery. This rusty piece of nothing. It's a taper holder that was in the Sophie Dawes scene. I mean, no one's going to remember it. But uh, I paid about £50 for that. Now, had that been at the Dorchester auction, that would have been nothing, but nevertheless. And looking down inside it, um, apparently, according to uh, to Vic, who's been round here, um, the brass content of these alone is worth more than that. Or maybe it was my dad who said it. I can't remember who said it. But anyway, this is um, some funnel thing and kettle and trivet which come from the the Henry VIII scene and I got uh, those for about £30 for the lot and that's everything I bought at the auction that's everything I own from braiding which is uh, currently over at my parents place on the Isle of Wight this is something you might not have seen it's a uh, flag that used to hang outside the entrance uh, and I won this for about a fiver on eBay This is something I want at the Dorchester auction. Uh, it's meant to be a torture item from the Chamber of Horrors, supposedly from the Royal Castle of Nuremberg, but of course it's not. Uh, it's either a boat hook or a poker or something. Um, I paid, I think, £75 for this, uh, plus, plus the costs. This used to hang up on the wall just behind the rather nonplussed guy who had his uh, hands in a pillory who was having his fingernails pulled out. If you look in the brochures, you can just see it hanging behind him. These were also from the auction at Dorchester. I think I paid about £60 for these. Again, supposedly torture implements. Well, they're clearly not. Uh, this, is, this leather thing is completely hardened. It's uh, presumably a dog muzzle for a fairly large dog. And it's not even, of course, complete. But these are more interesting. These, uh, these leather cuffs were part of the same lot. And knowing now that the, uh, the padded cell came from uh, a mental hospital at uh, Newport, I'm wondering maybe these are the genuine article that are restraining cuffs, which is a bit eerie. And here's another crowning glory. You'll remember her, but usually with a metal cage around her head. This is the uh, the head for the Scold Bridle. She used to revolve in the window, then she went into the Chamber of Horrors. Um, she was won, it was about £350 at the Dorchester auction, but whoever won her clearly wanted just the Scold's Bridle took it away and sold the head on eBay and I buy it now and I got this for £50. Um, she sits now on top of uh, my kitchen cupboards. So uh, so there she is. Um, she's fairly heavy, plaster thing, board underneath there. In fact, uh, this is a piece of scrap board that she was originally put on. Because you can see there's bits of paper ripped away from it underneath. The final item of any significance. Uh, this is the foot that came from a man trap that was shortly before you left the Chamber of Horrors. Um, look bone, although it's plastic. It's very heavy. Uh, it's just one that's scuffy old shoe. And then, look, you can actually still see there. Can you see the mark where the, uh, the man trap used to bite into the foot? See it just there? It's ripped through the sock as well. Now, again, the person who bought this on eBay, they paid a couple of, um, on the auction, they paid a couple of hundred pounds for it, but then they took the man trap off and they sold the foot on eBay, and I got this on a bite now, the same seller as the Scold's Bridal Head, for £30. This still gets used. 
Uh, with one of my ghost tours now, it's now br uh, brought out at an appropriate moment, so it, it's, uh, it's not been abandoned. And uh, that's my lot. That's everything of significance that I own from uh, the Osborne Smiths Waxworks at the moment. <laughs>